please remember to subscribe to my channel. This is really interesting because the three cycles keep reflecting that just because you think you've gone through changes, this is it, you can relax. There is no more to learn or to experience. And life says, no, there is. <laughs> You're not done yet. Hello and welcome to the third and final phase in the making of the fool from zero to hero. We spoke about when we started that you can learn or become more aware of how tarot reflects the journey of self-development if you lay out the cards in this manner. So the fool is on one side and then each of the three phases, the making of the hero, the alchemical transformation. And now we start the third and final phase, which is the enlightenment. So this can be quite heavy. It's all detailed in my book. You don't need to get it. I'm giving you a brief overview. I'd like to read to you what this phase three, the enlightenment phase is about. I've arranged the seven cards in this way. So that's the fool. Next, he's gonna meet the devil. Suddenly the tower. <laughs> then we've got the star, the hope, and then he dips down again to the moon, to the underworld, to the subconscious, to the world of dreams. Then he comes out, things are beginning to look up. It's sunny. And then when he thinks that transformation is over, he, he goes through the most um, important and difficult phase, which is judgment, so that he can really and truly cleanse, shed, let go of whatever has not been working in order to transform in the final stage and reach the total transformation where the world, where he becomes the world, or the world is at his feet. So this is really interesting because the three cycles keep reflecting that just because you think you've gone through changes, this is it, you can relax. There is no more to learn or to experience. And life says, no, there is. <laughs> You're not done yet. You need another process of transformation. And I made the difference. I made the distinction between transformation and change. So uh, moving homes is a change. Um, death or getting married or divorced, that is a transformation because or, or changing careers altogether. After being employed, starting your own business, that is a huge transformation because you need different skills, different tools, different perspective, and you need to equip yourself as though the fool is starting all over again. So remember at the beginning of the journey, the fool becomes the magician where he's got the four elements that he needs to develop, to learn, to master in order that he has infinite possibilities. So at every stage of transformation, we still have to visit that card in a different way. We still have to prepare for the new cycle in a different way. However, each phase of the transformation works on a certain aspect of our personality. So in the first phase, it's the growing up, the formation, having mentors, parents, spiritual parents, listening to guidance, balancing both the duality, having an ego in a materialistic world, but also maintaining the spiritual aspect where we listen to our intuition or we get inspired with what to do. So we're balancing spirit and the materialistic world. Phase three, which is about the enlightenment, the fool went through a periodic cycle of expansion and limitation that forced him to explore himself further and integrate evolving aspects of his personality. He was also reminded that sometimes, no matter how hard he tries, there will be periods of suspension, the hangman, to prepare him for yet another cycle of growth. To complete this transformation, he faces similar tests and lessons in phase three, which is where we're at, which are designed to unmask his true self as infinite consciousness in a human body. So it's a really, really important phase. The fool will learn to take a leap to a new level of awareness. So um, transformation or enlightenment or spiritual awareness is really an evolving 
process, never ending process. And the whole point of it is the dissolving of the ego. What keeps us going sometimes is having the ego. The ego says, you want a Mercedes car, you want the latest watch, you want X amount of money in the bank, whatever. <laughs> but, but really at the end of our evolution as consciousness in a body, those materialistic things, although are nice and enjoyable to achieve, are not what the game is about. So what is the game about? Maintaining one foot in either worlds, living for today, knowing that you could die tomorrow or transform into a different realm of existence. And are you ready for that? Do you understand what awareness is? Do you appreciate or have you developed your core values that are going to guide you? Are you in touch with your unconscious, with your dreams? Um, how do you behave towards others? Have you mastered your instincts? And so on. The most important thing to realize in this phase is the cycles of coming up, dipping down, coming up, dipping down, coming up, dipping down. So it tells us, it confirms, it asserts that there are cycles of change. Nothing is constant. It's kind of like cusps and troughs and we just have to go with it or surf the wave rather than fight it. The minute you understand that there will be cycles where you can really take off, grow, achieve, do things like taking a deep breath in, your chest expands. But then there are cycles of contraction where you have to breathe out, digest what you went through, reflect on your experiences. That's the contraction. And if there aren't any expansions and contractions, any expanding movement or constricting movement, we will not move. In a way, that's how our um, inner, inner, what do I call them, inner organs work. If it wasn't for contraction and expansion, nothing would move through your body. You wouldn't be able to digest and get rid of what you do not want. Same thing in life. You need a period of contraction where nothing seems to be happening on the outside world. You could be feeling you're stuck, but maybe you are not. Maybe you just needed to rest to um, not so much to relax, but really to reflect, to process what you went through in order to prepare and understand and identify what skills you need to learn, master, so that you can move on to this final phase where we are in the flow, things happen because we've understood the spiritual laws, if you like, we've understood mastering balance we've understood mind and heart and emotions and all of these aspects which seem to be in conflict but the purpose of which is to achieve mastery or balance between the two aspects so the first card he feels or he meets rather i wanted to say is the devil the devil is about accepting the shadow aspect of ourselves realizing that no matter what we still have these urges or desires. Most people are scared of the devil. I, I mean, I hope you're not. It just reflects things that we are attached to. The chains reflect anything you're addicted to. So the devil can reflect addiction, obsession, uh, being stuck. But notice, if you reverse the cards, then the chains come off. So the devil is about a self-imposed prison, if you will, where we keep ourselves chained. This very much represents the lover card, where instead of the angel, you have, let me move my cup of coffee, I'll have a sip. Decaf at this time of the day. So it reflects the lover's card, but it's the shadow of the card. Here we have the angel overlooking them, inspiration to achieve their goal. But this is the opposite. It's dark. It's the devil. It's the basic instincts. It's the being chained. So it can't be a positive card. Plus, obviously, the color reflects that. Where here we have a balance of color. We have a fruit, um, a tree bearing fruits and so on. Here it's all darkness, it's almost like grey, dead, and again we see the woman with the fruits and the man with the fire. So the yin and the yang. So if you reverse the card, the chains come off. So again, self-imposed struggle, self-imposed addiction, uh, self-imposed 
imprisonment, if you will, to the basic instinct or because of not mastering the basic instincts. Then suddenly, after being locked up for so long, suddenly the tower is about sudden changes. We, this is a symbol of building um, you know, towers so that we feel we are safe. And this card or the next cycle in the, or the next step in the journey tells us that you really can't. Even if you live in a high tower, the lightning will hit you, kingdoms will fall. Um, it, it's the destruction of the old in order to build the new. So something new, hopeful, inspired, can only come to happen if we get rid of the past. And if we don't, it will kind of happen on our behalf. <laughs> so we can't see it. Uh, the tower is sudden changes like the lightning that suddenly the lightning will hit and the destruction will happen in order to clear the way for the new. This reminds me of a story a friend of mine in England told me once. Um, she lived in Berkshire and they, there was a huge tree in the neighbor's garden. And for like, I don't know, 20, 30 years they lived and they never got the sun in the garden because the tree provided that shade. And she just said, you know, we just accepted it and we got used to it. And then suddenly we had that huge big storm in the 90s and lightning hit the tree and it like literally was destroyed and um, they cut it into logs and they used it for the fire and suddenly they have a sunny garden so um, although it seems negative change or negative destruction the purpose of which is to really let go of all i don't want to say superfluous things um, but it's mostly about the destruction of whatever we thought we're living our life to build and then suddenly we have to let go and yet we still have to rebuild again. I hope this wasn't too much for you, um, too dramatic. <laughs> Maybe we should stop here, but I encourage you to write your own thoughts, to contemplate, to reflect on what the cards mean. We, we're also seeing, like for me, the planets, the heavenly bodies, the moon, the sun, the stars are coming in. So there's a feeling of we're moving into a higher realm, if you like. Um, not necessarily more spiritual, but in a way it is, where you feel connected to the rest of the universe. So it's no longer about action and reaction, it's your impact and your interconnectedness to other aspects of the universe and the cosmos. It's worth saying here that when we are going through the devil phase, um, we're totally cut off in darkness. We're not aware of the illusion we're living in. So the tower comes to break that illusion, takes us out of the hole that we're stuck in, or the life that we built, thinking this is what our purpose is, or this is what I truly want, I've achieved my desire, then sudden changes happen so that you are freed from this, but also aspire to something more meaningful. So the tower takes the illusion away, but it's not all bad because he, he, the fool leaves the underground, it makes it possible by the destruction of the tarot. It breaks the chains, if you will. This is how I remember them. And at last, he meets the star. So the star is a huge contrast. After this dark period, we have the star, which is like the highest um, planetary, planetary or, or cosmic body, if you like. So suddenly there is hope, there is aspiration, uh, there is a need to break away from this mask in order for the true spirit. And notice how the star here is in the nude. We're not busy looking at what she's wearing. It's more where she is, how she operates, which is through intuition, which is what the stars reflect. So this card represents bliss, renewal, hope, I often also see it for sportsmen and athletes. I don't know why, but it, it, when I see this, it's quickness of thought, quickness of movement. It's almost unreal, unphysical, almost inspired, if you will. So that card, this card gives me a lot of inspiration. So the fool now can see that it is possible without indulging 
keeping his balance, maintaining his balance, although he's losing stuff, it's actually giving him the way to build new skills, to acquire new values, and he can see the light. <laughs> Literally, he can see the light, which gives him a lot of hope. So if you like, the stars represent spiritual heights. I also like the star because in, in uh, Unbox Life Mentoring, I often refer to your guiding star. So once you're in alignment, you're always in touch with the inner you. And I call that the, your guiding star. If you're in touch with your inner, with your body, with your inner feelings, with your inner uh, mechanism of thinking, with your inner mechanism of arriving at a decision, then you are in alignment. So it almost seems quite spiritual, magical that you're guided um, to where to go, what to do next, you know, to help you in the next phase of your life. Very, very positive star. Uh, the star card is a very positive card when you see it in a spread. So here we started entering, if you will, the celestial realms in order to prepare us for what is to come next or the tarot is telling us that now this is a different game. And what I want to say about this is when you... Um, up level <laughs> you need different tools so you can't think behave do the way that you did before so when you receive an upgrade if you like when life pushes you encourages you to grow to evolve to the next level the old tools the old programming the old ways of doing things do not apply anymore so it's almost like you're erasing a disk here in order to acquire new information a new know-how new awareness which is very subtle very sensitive but can help you to transcend whatever you're going through so that you can prepare for what's to come for the final phase of your transformation i hope you have found that helpful and i'll see you soon leave me a comment let me know if you're enjoying these videos and i remind you to subscribe because fortunately or unfortunately that's how youtube encourages other people to watch if you subscribe thank you again and see you soon please remember to subscribe to my channel